Lund Boats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. No question, largemouth bass love cover. Whether they live deep or shallow, bass often seek out cover to ambush their prey. Cover they often utilize can be in the form of rock, weeds, wood, or in more recent times, docks. Docks provide shallow bass overhead cover they desire, with the added benefit that their preferred forage in the form of sunfish and minnows gladly swim to them. And wherever you find an abundance of docks, you'll find Toronto native Mike Miller, for he knows forage and cover is the winning combination for big bruiser bass, and for anyone who seeks to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in an attempt to pull them out of their lair. That's a big old fish right there. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, today I am hoping to get on the water and uh, do one of my favorite things, and that's um, pitch and skip lures at docks for largemouth bass. <laughs> it sounds kind of corny, pitching and skipping, but uh, if there's one thing I can do, and if I had a day ever, one day left in my life to go fishing, I would probably find a shallow lake that had lots of uh, docks and shoreline structure to throw a jig at because uh, nothing beats flipping a jig at a dock um, and a big large boat coming out and eating it. So with any luck today will be one of those days that uh, if I could say it was my last day fishing I would be a happy man. But the, the key ingredient to dock fishing is having a good boat for doing it. You need a boat that'll draft shallow which means it'll float in shallow water. You need a good trolling motor that's quiet. With any luck uh, I'll smash some fish and, and have a good day. The cool thing uh, about largemouth fishing in Ontario is there's, you know, if you're not from here, there's a preconceived notion that, you know, we're up north and it's cold, but the fact is southern Ontario um, has such a wide variety of lakes and rivers and a, a real dense population of people. A lot of cottagers don't even bother with largemouth, you know, they're after walleye to eat um, or lake trout or trout species like that. but. So largemouth kind of get ignored and the fact of the matter is most people when they're standing on their dock talking to you are standing right over top of some of the best largemouth fishing Ontario has to offer. So the most obvious thing I'm going to do first is this western shore of the lake. You can see the sun comes up over here in the east. So these docks get sun early. With any luck, the bass will start getting active on these docks. <laughs> it's a race. What a cool little monster. Oh, in the water? Now you're going to notice um, one thing about this lake we're on. Ultra clear water. And a lot of people can, see, you can actually see under the docks and see things. And don't be afraid. Shallow and clear doesn't mean, doesn't mean no fish. It just means that fish that's under that dock can see your lure that much better. Now a lot of times when you're in clear water like this, I'll go buy a dock that I just flipped. And the, if the sun, the angle of the sun's right, I'll, I'll catch a look with my polarized glasses and see a big shadow or a big largemouth. And a lot of times that bait goes right by them and they don't even bite it. That's when I'll turn around and go back and try a different approach. Here comes Skipper and Gilligan straight at us.
Oh, here we go. Eat it. That's a good fish. I see him, he's going under the boat. Look at that, see, see the angle of the sun, I can see the other side of that dock and I just saw him. He's a fat fish, probably a four pounder. He's gone under this boat. Just donated a stick bait to a big old bass. <laughs> Straighten my hook out even a little bit. It's nice to go out and watch bass, learn. You could become like a nature show host. The activity of the largemouth bass is quite odd. Oftentimes. <laughs> Pontoon boats are enjoying a surge in popularity among recreational boaters. Performance and amenities make them appealing to those who enjoy a wide range of boating. Pontoons can also be full-featured, hardcore fishing machines. Take, for example, Lund's LX Fish & Cruise model. The LX Fish & Cruise comes equipped with spacious bow and midship seating for packing on family and friends, while the back is built for servicing the anglers in the group. A built-in rod locker, dual pedestal seating, a dedicated live well, bait well, and tackle station, and an open floor plan make fishing fun and efficient. We rigged this LX Fish & Cruise with a Minn Kota Altera for push button stow and deploy, the ability to stay mobile and to digitally anchor the boat using Altera's GPS-based spot lock. And it's easy to remove when not in use thanks to the Minn Kota quick release bracket. For shallow water fishing or pinning the pontoon in place, we added dual Talon shallow water anchors in opposite corners using Minn Kota's Talon pontoon edge mount kit. We went with an 8-foot talon in the front, which remains below line of sight, while an aft-mounted 10-foot model extends the depth range for deeper anchoring. A quality LCD fish finder rounds out the package. Simply put, these aren't your grandparents' pontoons. They're hardcore fishing boats that offer plenty of elbow room for multiple anglers and equally well-suited when it's time to load the boat with family and friends and take a relaxing spin around the lake. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Look at my secret hook box. <laughs> All my good expensive hooks are in the bottom here. See that? No one ever touches that because they think it's a kid's tackle box. I got her. I got this fish, finally we came back. Oh, around the post, get out of there. That's why I use braid. That's a porker, that's a good fish. Open that thing, oh yeah, for years. Gotcha, oh. That's how you hook them right there. Man, I've been losing my mind today. Cold, rain, wind, getting in and out of these docks and watching fish lethargically come out and look at baits. It's a beat up old bruiser. And uh, they're not hitting it. They're just swirling on it, breathing on it. Finally, I came back to this dock, pitched in, and I watched uh, a couple of panfish scatter, which said, oh, something's happening down there. And sure enough, uh, I could just barely see this fish fin out from under that boat and flare its gills and when it did that I knew I had it and it just went bananas but that's a big old fish right there <laughs> well back into the water with you beautiful man you know on a good day it's easy but on a tough day it can be it can be pretty hard and, and if you're not paying attention to what's going on you're not going to catch those fish um, I saw that fish earlier in the day. I knew if we come back here, I'd get a chance at it. But uh, same thing, I changed baits. I went to a, a four inch tube, just on a keeper here. Screw it on, rig it weedless, Texas style, like that. And uh, you gotta skip it under there and it's so soft and supple that it just sort of flutters down. And when it hits bottom, 
those fish will come over from wherever they are and look at it, and that fish did exactly that. I waited for it to hit bottom. I could see him swim over. A couple of panfish started out, and he just almost breathed that in and put the hooks to him and drag him out of there. But he was around posts and all sorts of stuff. So the rush I get from that is worth it. Man. Yeah, a lot of guys, uh, when, they, when they're when they fishing docks, there's a misconception, you know, stay back from the dock and make long casts. But I'm telling you right now, in clear water, as long as you're moving slow and you're being stealthy, the advantage to being close to the dock in clear water is if you just pitch a lure in or throw a lure in, shake it a couple times or swim it down the dock, if you're 20, 30 feet back, you don't know whether or not a fish was actually in there um, and maybe missed your bait or followed your bait. When you're this close, as long as you're going slow and you, you make a cast to where you want it to be, a lot of precision, you can actually see that fish come out and if they're not aggressive, work the fish. Uh, you'll see it sort of sneaking its way out from under the dock and that allows you to, to work the bait. You can shake it, twitch it, um, just subtly move it. By the time that fish figures it out, it's probably got your bait in its mouth and uh, you've set the hook on it. So, Okay, I'm going to put the talons down. This is a prime dock. Uh, this is kind of what I look for. It's low to the water. You see how the water is almost touching the, the, the base of that dock. There's some slop blown up on it. There's a boat with a cover on it that probably hasn't been moved in a while. And chances are pretty good that this will have a fish on it. And also, you'll see there's a little creek here. Uh, I don't know if it's a drainage ditch or a feeder creek coming in, but a lot of times bass will spawn in there and then they just simply move out and hold on the first structure on the outside. The two or three docks on each side are prime, but this dock especially is, is especially good because how low it is to the water. My troll motor basically is hitting bottom. We're in a foot of water, but the these Pro-V basses have a, such a shallow draft, I can get anywhere. Anywhere a fish can swim and this boat will float, I can catch a bass. But you never know, there could be two, three, four, five, six, seven of them under there. I'm hoping one of these guys will swim underneath the dock with it. Look what I found, guys. Hey, give me that. So earlier, before we got the sun and, the, and it's, it cleared up, we had some overcast conditions. It was calm. Uh, we came up to this spot here and uh, I actually pitched a bait to the side of this old green boat and I had a giant fish come out. Yeah, giant, it's a giant. I got a six pounder on the bait. He turned back and went in. Oh my God, it's huge. That's a giant, bro. Now this dock is literally I'm going to say 50 to 70 meters away from that little cut and it's ideal. I mean, if you look at this dock, you've got uh, a boathouse, some dying weed and mat pushed up in the corner here along this fence that they've got for the swimming area. And then the old square dock out here is, is low to the water. There's a pontoon boat on the other side, so there's a lot of structure here, a lot of area where panfish and, and, and bait fish and a lot of areas where a big fish can hide and ambush. So, I mean, it makes so much sense that that big old tank bass that was under that boat was there. Catching it, that's up to me, <laughs> or you, if you get out here and try this. But, but once I get into position, I'm going to talon down here and really oh, work this. Now what I'm doing here is I'll let that bait sit down and sink and hit bottom and lay my suffix braid on the surface and watch it. If I see that braid jump, Sometimes I'll just set the hook um, because a fish picks it up and swims with it. So you'll see me pull two or three strips of line off of there after I pitch it in. So what I want to happen there is uh, oftentimes if you pitch in and your line's tight, the bait will sink out towards you. If you pull off that couple strips of line, the bait's going to sink straight down. Uh, where you actually landed the bait, and that's where you want it to be. You don't want it to be two, three feet out from Panfish. Um, you don't want it to be two, three feet out from where you cast it. You want it to hit the spot you, you cast to and sink down there. So if your line's tight, it's naturally going to 
pull it back towards you, especially if there's a breeze, like you can see this flag's blowing here. Um, just the weight of my line and the wind will pull that bait out from under the dock. So if you strip that line off, that bait will go back under there and be where you want it. And always watch that line floating on the surface because a lot of times, as soon as it sinks and hits bottom, a fish will pick it and you'll see the line jerk in under the dock and then you know something's picked it up. So before I leave, I'll always just throw something else in there before I leave. Just in case. Sometimes that's all it takes is, ooh, panfish are loving this, which is good. And a lot of times I've had big fish steal it off the, the panfish. You let them swim under there with it. Look at this. See that? That's panfish pulling on my rod, which it's hard to not set the hook when that happens. See that? But what happens a lot of times is they'll draw attention now to themselves in that bait. And if there's a big fish under there that's lethargic, it'll just come over out of spite, I think, oftentimes and steal that right off a of panfish. Got him. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. Don't get off. Oh. Don't get off. Oh, this is the one I needed. I got him. Oh, not as big as I thought, but it's a good one. Hey, that's not a giant, but look at the square belly. Not a bad fish at all. I'm gonna retie. No! No, 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 and no. I had a hot date with a bass under this tree and you wrecked everything. Hope we get eaten by muskies. All y'all. If you're looking for a new ice fishing challenge, consider smallmouth bass. These prized cool water fighters remain surprisingly active under a sheet of ice. The first step is to find them, and this is best accomplished using your fish finder late in the fall. Smallmouth congregate in wintering holes located on mid-depth rock-laden bottoms adjacent to main lake reefs and points. Mark waypoints and return to these spots at first ice. An LCD sonar chart plotter combo like the affordable Lowrance Hook 4 puts you back on the spot. Spoons with rattles are tough to beat. Smallmouth are receptive to sound and will often come to you. If the bite is real tough, downsize to a 16th ounce jig with a quality hook. An LCD fish finder is vital to honing your presentation until you figure out what it takes to get bit. And hold on for a wild ride. Hey, I'm Mike Miller, host of Angler and Hunter Television, and I can proudly say I've run a Lund most of my professional career. Now, as a hardcore bass angler, Lund has two models that are just spectacular for bass fishermen. The 2075 Pro V Bass and the 1875 Pro V Bass, which is what I'm on board here. Now, this boat has been meticulously thought out for bass anglers. It has ample rod storage for up to 15 rods, and it holds full-length flipping sticks down to uh, six foot, five and a half foot finesse rods. Uh, battery chargers are underneath here. Your batteries are underneath here. Everything's very accessible. Storage of this boat is second to none. Giant front compartments. Um, as you can see, I've got this one jammed full, but you could put your kids in these things and no one would even know where they're hiding. The uh, foot pedal is a recessed port there, so you uh, don't get fatigued when you're running your trolling motor all day. Now going to the back of this boat, it's available in single or dual consoles. And the model I have is obviously the bench seat, fold down middle seat, so if you want to step through, no problem. Now the other model is the Pro V Bass XS, which has two pedestal seats and then two flip down seats, so you can seat up to four people in it. My favorite feature about the Pro V Bass though has got to be this tackle storage. When I'm in a tournament or I want quick access to my favorite lures, you can stack your boxes in here, quick access, throw them back in. That locks and it's lockable so no one can steal your stuff when your boat's unattended. And of course, for any tournament fisherman, a split live well that has recirc um, and a pump out feature. Now to get the most performance out of this Lund, I put a 
six inch jack plate on it, which I mounted these arms to here, and I've got eight foot talons on it. I like the eight footers because they sit below the motor, and uh, I like to sneak through culverts and bridges and overhangs and stuff like that. So having a low profile boat lets me get into places, and having the setback on there lets me get on plane quick in shallow water and up to top speed real quick. So if you're a hardcore bass or musky angler, you gotta check out the 2075 and 1875 Pro V bass models. I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. There's a good bass here, good bass here. He's facing us. What? Where did it go? It was looking right me right in the eye. Oh, he stole my lure. Sorry about that. Just try not to hook you. You stole it, stole my stick, buddy. <laughs> when I'm dock fishing, I'll usually rig three rods. And my go-to um, when the bite's on, when, when action's fast, is a uh, three-eighths or a half-ounce flipping jig with a craw trailer or a plastic chunk trailer. And I'll have two colors, usually black, and then a natural color, like a brown or a pumpkin seed. And then a tube or uh, any kind of a a finesse bait that you can skip under a dock. And then my last resort, six and a half foot heavy action spinning rod with 20 pound braid. And then what I'll do is I'll use a wacky hook with a weed guard on it. There's a few different styles you can get. This here's a Gamagatsu hook, but, um, and then I'll get a stick bait, rig it on there and skip that under docks. And nine times out of 10, the panfish will grab it. But oftentimes when they pull it under, they draw attention to it and a bass uh, will then trigger to come over and eat it, so. And if that doesn't work, I'll take a deep breath, look down the shoreline and hope you get another one. Got one. He's around a chain. I think I lost him. He's wrapped up in something. Oh man. I can see him down there. Oh my god. I can't believe this. I finally got the fish we need. And he's wrapped up in something. I'm just gonna keep my line tight. This is mayhem. I got him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe what I just had to do to get this fish <laughs> out from under <laughs> that dock? My nerves are shattered. Oh. There's all sorts of chains and stuff <sighs> at the front of this dock. Can you believe that? Look at that big green pig. Well, dock fishing pays off. Rain's coming. Hog in the hand. I'm gonna let him go. You go get bigger, buddy. Go on. Woo, he's ornery. <laughs> the mayhem, I had to try and net him and then he was around a chain. But uh, use all the tools. Talon, you know, trolling motor, um, electronics, and a wicked bass boat that gets shallow and allows you to position around docks. Well, that's it for me. <laughs> oh yeah, oh my, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's catch a release right there. <laughs> Rock bass action. Over the shoulder release, you like that, huh? Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.